you standing and speaking in the corner. Can you sit down so we can begin, please? I don't have a gavel, so I'm going to have to use my pen. Are we ready? Thank you, everyone. Um, bienvenue, chers collègues, à notre sujet aujourd'hui, qui renforce l'engagement citoyen afin de construire uh, des sociétés sécuritaires. Uh, en tant que parlementaire, il est naturel pour nous de s'engager avec nos citoyens. Now, it's important for us to be able to engage with our citizens, and that should be an easy job for us, because we're parliamentarians. Um, and so our focus in today's session really is strengthening citizens' engagement in building secure societies. Not all of those we represent, however, in our countries are equally engaged, and that presents a challenge, because a special rep representative on gender issues, I'm acutely aware of the gap in representation of women in public life. But similar challenges exist in many countries for minority populations, populations who are smaller and different because of their race, their religion, their gender, their sexual orientation and the ability to engage them and to bring them in to a democracy so that can, they can be part, not only of the decision making, but of helping governments to understand the needs of their minorities is very important. When you have everyone in a country, whether they be, are minorities or the majority, all agreeing to move in the same direction, you have a secure nation. When they are separated because Many groups feel they do not belong. Well, they rise up against the majority and begin to create insecurity within society. So it's important for many reasons for us to engage civil society. I know, for instance, the Roma populations in many European countries are frequently underrepresented in political bodies. Now, while young people, we well know, are fully engaged in social media and technology in an unprecedented way, I suspect that we all struggle with trying to engage them in public policy, or even in many instances, trying to get them to vote. For example, in Canada, virtually all youth aged 15 to 24 use social networking sites. Yet 18 to 24 year olds were the least likely in Canada to vote during the last federal election. So what are we doing wrong? How do we not engage them well enough so that they become part of the solution? These questions about representation are not just an issue of human rights, but they represent a major security issue for us. A stable and secure society must be based on the very core democratic principle of citizen participation. It's vital that we find ways to activate and empower people, whether it's a local business group, an artist cooperative, an NGO giving voice to the vulnerable in their society, or young people wanting to change their society but not finding a way to do it. I think we can all learn from each other to find new and dynamic ways to engage our populations. We've seen in a number of countries how ombudsman institutions and civil society can work together and how governments can work together with civil society to strengthen accountability and transparency and give citizens a more active role in deciding their futures and the futures of their lives. I hope that we are going to hear from you about some of the initiatives that our experts in the OSC field missions are using to engage grassroots and from you later on to tell us what you're doing back in your parliaments. I suggest that we proceed with short remarks from each of our introducers, and then I will open up the floor to comments and questions. If you wish to make an intervention, please signal this to the International Secretariat up here at the podium as early as possible. And given that we're in Bishkek, I propose that we start by hearing from Ambassador Pierre Von Arc, head of the OSCE program office in Bishkek. Distinguished Member of Parliament, Excellencies, Honorable Madame Heidi Frey, ladies and gentlemen, let me first thank the President of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly, George Tseretseli, and his Secretary General Roberto Montella for inviting me to address the session on strengthening citizen engagement in building secure societies. 
I welcome all of you in Kyrgyzstan, a beautiful country in which I have the honor to represent the OSC. As head of uh, mission of the OSC program office in Bishkek, I will focus my address on the unique recent experience of the Kyrgyz Republic in strengthening citizen engagement in building secure societies. With my presentation, I would like also to give you a flavor of the excellent cooperation the OAC is enjoying with the Kyrgyz society, its government, and numerous actors active in building a democratic society while preserving its roots and identity. The Kyrgyz Republic gained independence 27 years ago and has made remarkable progresses in building democratic institutions and a resilient society. The country went through two revolutions in 2005 and 2010. The Kyrgyz Republic experienced challenges in its democratic development and suffered from high level of insecurity. However, it has also experienced unprecedented leaps in its democratic development and in strengthening its citizen engagement in building secure society. I would argue that the recent Kyrgyz experience might be a model of positive democratic development in the OAC area. The 2015 parliamentary election and the competitive presidential election last autumn are strong illustration of that. Today, Kyrgyzstan and the Central Asian region is marked by a positive agenda to which the OSC is privileged to, to participate as a genuine partner. The OSC film mission celebrates 20 years of presence in Kyrgyzstan. I am satisfied to say that with the negotiation of the new mandate adopted last year, the OSC was able to reset its relation and enjoy nowadays excellent cooperation with the whole state in all three dimensions. I will present five successful activities or success stories in building a more resilient and secure society in Kyrgyzstan based on the OAC comprehensive security model. The topics are the following. Electoral reforms, the role of women in peace and security, effort in strengthening community cohesion and delivery of public services, regulatory reform by engaging with the business community and civil society, and finally, open government partnership. First, improving the electoral system. Since 2010, Kyrgyzstan made considerable progresses in developing a modern electoral system and legislation by ensuring participation of all citizens throughout the country, including women, persons with disabilities, and minorities. In March this year, President Zembekov issued a decree in order to further improve the electoral system based on national and international observation recommendation, among them the recommendation made by ODIR and the Parliamentary Assembly. As per decree of the President, a working group was tasked to develop and submit a comprehensive strategy to be presented to the Nas National Council of Sustainable Development this summer. The task includes holding public uh, consultative discussions also. The main goal of this strategy is to ensure equal access of all citizens to execute their electoral rights. The Central Election Commission played an instrumental role and made exemplary work in addressing issues such as improving electoral legislation, equal access to political participation for both women and men, introduction of new voting technologies, increasing funding transparency of political parties, increasing awareness of citizens, and addressing vote buying on misuse of public resources. The OSC program office in Bishkek and the NGO Civic Platform were chosen as partner because they enjoy excellent and long-term cooperation with the Central Election Commission. The OAC provided expert support and created a platform for public consultative 
discussion, and the discussion were conducted in the seven oblasts of the country with the representation of underrepresentative groups such as persons with disabilities, youth, and women active in political and public life. In total, we had more than 500 participants, among them more than 30 persons were women. A comprehensive strategy was developed and finally approved by the National Council on Sustainable Development this summer, and it com contains major recommendations to be implemented the coming years, and you have a copy in English and Russian on the table at the end of this room. Second example, role of women in peace and security. The program office in Bishkek supports 24 women initiative group, which played and continue to play an instrumental role in the aftermath of the 2010 event in preventing a mediation co mediating conflict, thus underlining the importance of the role of women in building secure societies. The Women Initiative Group are active in multiple parts of the country and consists of 150 members from various provinces. The OAC continuously engages through trainings and supporting networks of Women Initiative Group to increase their understanding in root causes of conflict, the role of women in conflict prevention and mediation skills. Through our capacity building support, this group functions autonomously as a pre-judicial referral mechanism for gender-based violence cases. Currently, these courageous women are developing economic projects for their community independently, are active in familial planning, and in preventing bride kidnapping. By supporting this initiative, through training on capacity building, the office supports the engagement of women group at the community level as an effective conflict prevention mechanism, as well as strengthening the overall role of women in the society. Moreover, since women remain underrepresented in the security sector, my office supported last year the creation of the Kyrgyz Women Association in the security sector which recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the largest Uzbek women group. Third example, enhancing citizen involvement in creating safe community. After the event in 2010, the cohesion of local, of local communities had to face a, number, face a number of challenges. Many were related to lack of trust and confidence in the police. The host country requested, therefore, the OSC to assist in addressing these challenges by strengthening the ability of police and local communities to interact together and build cohesive relationship. Mobile re reception unit, literally police station on wheels, were created based on a large program called the Community Security Initiative. In order to support and monitor their activities, Association of Local Council for NPR support were created and registered as a legal entity in the Ministry of Justice. The main objective is to ensure and assist the community in the resolution of a wide range of issues that are confronted with thus contributing in overall security. I think that the active involvement of the citizen in addressing the security issues at the grassroots level has in many cases led to regional government administration delegating responsible civil servant duties to support the association activities. And although this community initiative was closed uh, in 2015, we are continuing to uh, developing uh, this activity. And uh, last year, more than 2,000 patrols from one till eight days were conducted, where 7,000 citizens used the service, and in 87% of the cases, the issues raised were solved on the spot. 
And uh, I would like also to uh, underline that Kyrgyzstan joined the Open Government Partnership in November last year, and yesterday was a very interesting side event uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, as a concluding remark, um, I would like to underline that parliamentarians have direct contact with their constituencies and represent interests and voice of the citizens. And I would like to use this opportunity to call all present to action for believing in parliamentary diplomacy. With your assistance, we can improve our engagement with the citizens of our countries, specifically strengthening their engagement in building secure and resilient society. And I think your engagement is also instrumental for strengthening ties at regional level. I hope uh, with that um, I was delivering some useful and fruitful inputs for your discussion and I thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador Von Ark. I think what we heard today was some very practical ways of engaging society and I think it's really important at these meetings for us to look at things that we can do things that we can emulate that other countries are doing well. And I think we've heard that uh, happening here in Kyrgyzstan. Um, and we're now fortunate to have uh, Mr. Almazbek Musabekov, Deputy Director of the National Institute for Strategic Studies of the Kyrgyz Republic. Mr. Musabekov brings to his position a wealth of experience in government, having served in the presidential administration and executive offices. I expect that particularly his extensive work with local governance issues will be able to give us some more information today that can lead our discussion as we open up the floor. Mr. Musabekov, you have the floor. Спасибо. Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа. Рад приветствовать всех участников осеннего заседания парламентской ассамблеи ОБОСЕ в Бишкеке. Хочу выразить благодарность организаторам за приглашение выступить на столь важном мероприятии. В настоящее время мир вступил в период, который характеризуется динамичными изменениями и событиями. На глобальном и региональном уровнях происходят системные сдвиги во всех сферах – торговой, экономической, политической, культурной, социальной, технологической. Смена привычной международной среды и условий развития подталкивает многие страны к поиску и выработке новых моделей развития, учитывающих новые вызовы и возможности. Одним из способов противостоять современным вызовам и угрозам является внедрение новых IT-технологий. Для создания более безопасной среды и облегчения жизни граждан Кыргызской Республики в последние годы активно внедряются новые технологии и принимает соответствующая нормативно-правовая база в таких сферах, как образование, здравоохранение, городская среда, государственное управление, в том числе в избирательной системе. Учитывая, что частные выборы – залог устойчивого развития страны, обеспечение свободных демократических выборов было определено одной из приоритетных задач. В рамках реализации данного вопроса в выборный процесс Кыргызстана была внедрена новая избирательная модель, предусматривающая составление списков избирателей и их идентификацию на основе биометрических данных и автоматический подсчет голосов избирателей с использованием автоматических считывающих урн. Апробация новой избирательной модели на выборах в парламент, местные кенеши и в процессе референдума прошла в целом успешно. Осенью 2017 года состоялись выборы главы государства, президента Кыргызской Республики, также на основе новой модели выборов с использованием новых технологий. Внедрение новой избирательной модели способствовало исключению фальсификации в процессе голосования и определения итогов в виде каруселей, бросов для бюллетеней, что позволило вернуть доверие граждан к выборам, а также решить ряд проблем, которые ранее являлись факторами стабилизации ситуации в стране. Дальнейшее совершенство правовой основы использования новых технологий в практике проведения выборов и референдумов позволит расширить возможности реализации подлинного народовластия в стране. Важно отметить, что в рамках национальной стратегии устойчивого развития Кыргызской Республики на 2018-40 годы намечен курс на реструктуризацию государственного управления через использование новых технологий. Определены программные шаги по укреплению гражданского сектора и гражданской самоорганизации через реализацию программы цифровой трансформации ТАЗАКОМ. Данная программа направлена на создание открытого, прозрачного, высокотехнологического общества на уровне гражданина, конкурентного бизнеса, стабильного государства и надежных международных отношений. 
первую очередь, это эффективная и прозрачная система государственного управления, выстраивающая гармоничное взаимодействие с обществом на основе свободного доступа и использования современных цифровых технологий. На этой основе Кыргызстан будет последовательно укреплять демократические принципы в развитии государства. Вовлечение в процесс принятия национальных решений более широких слоев населения позволит максимально учитывать волю граждан страны, а также будет способствовать осуществлению с их стороны эффективного контроля за деятельностью государственных, государственной власти всех уровней. Тазаком станет эффективным инструментом для искоренения коррупции в государственном секторе путем минимизации влияния человеческого фактора через автоматизацию административных процессов и процедур и предоставление цифровых государственных услуг. Донедведение новых технологий будет содействовать решению вопросов профилактики и борьбы со всеми видами экстремизма и терроризма, а также принятию эффективных мер в вопросах экологической безопасности, обеспечения безопасности границ и в других сферах. Все эти меры будут способствовать улучшению жизни и безопасности граждан. Уважаемые участники заседания, учитывая важность рассматриваемых вопросов, направленных на совершенство демократического управления в странах, обеспечение безопасности, предлагаем усилить взаимодействие по вопросам сотрудничества в сфере внедрения IT-технологий. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much, Mr. Musabekov. Uh, and now we are for, uh, we're going to go to the final speaker, uh, who is here on behalf of the OSCE's project coordinator in Uzbekistan. Hans Ulrich Im brings both academic and diplomatic experience to his work in the OSCE, as well as several decades of experience working for German development and cooperation agencies. He has worked in the Central Asian region since 2006, and we have no doubt that we will all follow with interest the significant changes which he saw taking place in Uzbekistan in recent years. So now we look forward to hearing about developments there as seen from our <coughs> OSCE office. Mr. Um, you have the floor. Many thanks, Madam Chair, distinguished members of parliaments, excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the struggle uh, for <clears throat> a participative uh, <clears throat> approach for the possibility of citizens to take part in the um, uh, uh, security issues was a struggle uh, that started still in the early 70s uh, when the OEC still was the CSC, the Conference for Security and uh, cooperation in, in Europe, uh, because on the one hand uh, was a classical way, the government is responsible for security. Uh, this was the Eastern approach at that time, uh, and the Western answer was security is much more. Security uh, has to include all citizens. Um, then uh, <clears throat> we had uh, the collapses of Soviet Union and uh, uh, former Yugoslavia. Many people thought that uh, this is the end of the history, but uh, unfortunately, history repeated. Some governments uh, and so societies had a participative approach, others had not. And I do not want to offend anybody, but in my host country, this was not the case uh, in ideal manner for many years. But uh, we saw changes since late 2016, uh, when uh, Shavkat Mirzoyev was elected president of Uzbekistan. This uh, took place in December 2016, after he had been acting president for some months since September. Uh, <clears throat> President Mirzoyev um, demonstrated a different approach to solving of uh, problems of the society. Under his direct leadership was elaborated an action strategy as a so-called strategy, strategy for further development in the Republic of Uzbekistan in the years 2017-2021. And when we have a look at the five main, main directions of development, uh, which are first, improvement of state and public construction, 
Second, ensuring the rule, the, uh, the rule of law and further reform of the judicial system. Third, the development and liberalization of the economy. Fourth, the development of social sphere. And fifth, ensuring the society, uh, the, uh, uh, security, inter-ethnic harmony, and religious tolerance. The implementation of balanced, mutually beneficial and constructive foreign policy, so we can say these are at least 90% uh, OSCE commitments. When we support the five directions, we support the building of a secure society in Uzbekistan. And we, as the project coordinator, OSCE project coordinator in Uzbekistan, we are very happy that we can uh, <clears throat> take part in this uh, process. Uh, we support the OEC concept of comprehensive security that is not limited to classical security issues and classical partners like state security service, Minister of Internal Affairs, Defense Ministry, and so on. Just the opposite. Our programmatic work is really aimed at the citizens. Citizens who are educated, uh, who have uh, access uh, to health facilities, have economic and personal prospects, form a secure society. Uh, <clears throat> and in Uzbekistan, the participation of the public is now really demanded and guaranteed. Also, Uzbekistan has a new approach to regional cooperation. Uh, in August 2017, uh, the Uzbek government, uh, together with the United Nations and together with the OEC project coordinator in Uzbekistan, organized a conference uh, called Central Asia, Focal Point of Uzbekistan's Foreign Policy. And I want to give you here my personal experience. I have been working in Central Asia since 2006. And this was the first conference I took part, where the uh, participants did not speak about each other with complaints, with concerns, and even offenses. They speak to, uh, to each other. They uh, were looking for uh, solutions, and they found uh, such solutions. Again, we are happy to take part in, uh, in these solutions. We want uh, people to, to become more healthy, uh, more wealthy, and so on. And so, I want to give you an overview about some of the programs uh, we are conducting in Uzbekistan. And we are thinking that just uh, these uh, examples illustrate how people together, of course, with the government and together with international organizations, uh, build a secure society. A female managers program. The PCUs has conducted a series of tailor-made professional management training courses for 150 female managers from across the country. It is believed that women participated in the program, both junior and more advanced managers, will considerably develop their careers further within the organizations or outside and help to break stereotypes shaped in society and be a trigger for those willing to advance as managers and not covered by the project. With this uh, approach, from 150 participants of the program, the impact covers 1,000 or maybe even 1,500 people at large, including families, communities, and those who benefit through multiplication effect of knowledge shared by the attendees of the trainings. Currently, the project partners are monitoring career ad advancements of attendees. In addition, the project up and delivering results aims to provide recommendations to the government in order to replicate and multiply such professional training programs all around the country. Sustainable transportation. The PCUs is intensively promoting sustainable mobility policies in Uzbekistan through organized best practice exchange, capacity building for local governments, and wider engagement of business and society into discussion. The office was able to facilitate contacts and discussions of inter uh, international business and local administration of Tashkent on introduction of bike sharing schemes in the city as a last mile solution. Apart from this, the PCUs organizes 
public discussions on integration of bicycle lanes in cities of Uzbekistan and even piloted one of such projects in the city of Namangan. As a part of campaigning activities, the PCU is strongly advocating for involvement of women into decision-making processes concerning sustainable mo mobility and promotes cycling among women as a measure to break stereotypes that cycling is only male type, uh, <clears throat> as only male type of transportation. With this, the PCU is cooperated with global programs called Transformative Urban Mobility Initiatives and already conducted a number of joint activities. Uh, assistance to civil society in conducting public oversight over the activities of state bodies and to advocate for the effective implementation of international human rights treaties and national laws. This project is designed to particularly encourage civic activism and participation in advocating for policies of public interest. Thus, in the framework of the <coughs> of the current project. The PCU is jointly with the National Human Rights Center and the Committee on Democratic Institutions, NGOs, and self-governing bodies of the Legislative Chamber of the Parliament held a roundtable discussion titled Public Examination of Laws and Other Legal Normative Acts as an active, act, Effective Form of Public Oversight over the Governmental Bodies. The round table brought together 55 representatives of the parliament, the academia, and civil society organizations. It aimed at raising awareness on the importance of public expertise to improve public oversight over the lawmaking activities of state bodies. Uh, I was advised that I have n <laughs> only a few minutes. Of course, I have some, some more examples. Maybe I can give them later in the discussion. At the moment, I want to finish with thanking to the uh, government of Uzbekistan, the other authorities of Uzbekistan in supporting us and supporting mainly the, the, the own people in uh, this kind of development. And I also want to uh, thank my colleagues from the other, from the neighboring field missions and the other institutions of OECE because many of these programs and projects we are implementing together uh, with uh, our neighboring uh, missions, uh, together with ODEAR, for instance, and other institutions, with the Secretariat, of course, with other institutions of uh, the OSCE family, and we, were, we are very happy to be in this situation. Many thanks. Thank you very much. That was very interesting, and now we're going to go to the participation part of this program. Uh, and our first, now I, I think I noticed yesterday that at three minutes, a lot of people went over time. So, looking at the speakers list, I think I can allow you four minutes, which means I'm going to be brutal in stopping you when the time comes. You've gotten an extra minute each. We shall begin with Mr. Omur Kolov from Kyrgyzstan. Спасибо, уважаемый госпожа председатель, за вашу доброту. Уважаемый член парламентской делегации, дамы и господа, сообщество безопасности – это ведение, которое может реализоваться только при условии, что государство и общество будут активно вкладывать усилия в дело его построения. Однако большая часть политической элиты и широкая общественность не приняли этого внимания. Более того, отдельные государства часто определяют концепцию сообщества безопасности различными порой противоречащими понятиями. Некоторые государства считают, что путь к сообществу безопасности должен начаться с решения вопросов личной безопасности. Другие придерживаются мнения, что подлинное сообщество безопасности предполагает наличие системы общих ценностей. Тут необходимо уточнить, что по нашему пониманию Сообщество безопасности представляет собой сообщество государств и обществ, чьи ценности, общественный строй и социальная идентичность сближены настолько, что война между ними становится немыслимой. Сообщество безопасности означает устойчивый и прочный мир между странами и внутри обществ, независимо от членства государств в различных блоках и альянсах, 
где разногласия решаются только мирным путем. Понятие сообщества безопасности не сводится только к отношениям между государствами. Она охватывает все сегменты и уровни общества, которые взаимосвязаны множеством каналов для свободной коммуникации и свободного передвижения. Она также создает возможность для принятия более эффективных совместных мер против общих вызовов и угроз. Становление сообщества безопасности является результатом длительного процесса, который позволяет преодолеть наследие прошлого, создать взаимное доверие, усилить точки сближения, развивать общую идентичность и институты. Со дня вступления ОБСЕ и подписания Хельсинского заключительного акта Крымская республика привержена идее свободного, демократического, общего и неделимого сообщества безопасности на пространстве ОБСЕ. Большая роль в создании сообщества безопасности в приграничных регионах Кыргызстана принадлежит местным государственным административным и органам местного самоуправления. Вопрос укрепления доверия и бесконфликтного соседства Крымская республика решает через культурный обмен между соседними административными единицами приграничных стран, проведение спортивных мероприятий, совместную организацию различных торжественных мероприятий. Что касается укрепления сообщества безопасности внутри страны, то здесь надо отметить, что граждане могут избрать для себя различные формы для продвижения как частных, так и коллективных инициатив. В этой связи проведение президентских выборов с применением биометрических данных и мирной транзит власти в Кыргызстане осенью 2017 года укрепило уверенность населения страны, гражданского общества о прямом его участии в формировании власти в стране и непосредственно влиянии на принимаемые решения. Об этом сегодня подробно сказал в своем выступлении уважаемый Пьер фон Аркс. Реализация реформ и правоохранительных и судебных сферах, предварительная публикация и общественное обсуждение законопроектов, затраивающих вопросы безопасности, проведение круглых столов с участием общественности и экспертов, в том числе зарубежных, позволяет учитывать мнение общественности республики в законотворческой деятельности. Активное взаимодействие исполнительных органов власти – с неправительственными и некоммерческими организациями, регулярные встречи президента, лидеров парламентских фракций, общественные советы при министерствах и ведомствах Хрыстской Республики с представителями НПО дают дополнительный толчок для укрепления участия общественности в создании сообществ безопасности в стране. Уважаемые коллеги, как народным представителям страны ОБСЕ нам предстоит играть важную роль Института формирования общества безопасности. И как парламентарии мы должны сделать все возможное для убеждения наших коллег в своих национальных парламентах, наших правительств и, главное, наших избирателей, что только через открытое обсуждение и диалог мы сможем защитить общие интересы и позиции во имя создания сообщества безопасности в регионе ОБСЕ. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirloff. And now we go to my uh, dear colleague, uh, Margareta Setterfeld from Sweden. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to start to thank our host, uh, uh, the Kyrgyzstan Parliament. Uh, your hospitality is uh, amazing, and uh, this is my fifth time I visit Kyrgyzstan, and every time Kyrgyzstan has been a fantastic host. I do also would like to highlight the, B the OSE Academy in Bishkek. I see it as very valuable because young people meet and they get education together and they get education for an open society and what they can do to improve democracy, human rights and the openness. And this is very valuable. And also when we talk about uh, the freedom of a society and includeness, democracy, I must also say that uh, I am very worried about what's happened in Turkey this summer when it was the election. A Swedish MP, as well as a German MP, was not allowed to enter Turkey. And this is a huge threat for democracy and the free society when we have, as always, the EPA, a mission to observe the election, the 
most important point of, a, of democracy and they are not allowed to enter the country. I'm sad for that. But what I also would like to talk about is uh, corruption. And I must say that today's world, there is a lot of challenges. Uh, and we could see that the challenges today, they are different from the challenges in the 20th century. And the fluidity and the arbitrary patterns in global politics have in many uh, ways replaced the grave, but nonetheless daunting threats of the Cold War era. The notion of truth itself is being threatened, and as a consequence, the opportunity for the citizens of the world to hold their rulers accountable, for which government can be brought to justice when the, guest, uh, when the quest for truth becomes obsolete. The question, this question bears relevance. The approach to the judicial system and the human rights rights seems to take a more authoritarian form. And if we want to have a free democratic society where civil society is included, we need more openness, we need more transparency. And one of the first victims of these threats is the trust in our society. With the high levels of trust between government, lawmakers, media, and citizens, including the civil society, corruption and suspicion takes its place. Its place. That is why the OSCE PA have to continue to take a stance in the fight against corruption when fundamental principles of justice and law are challenged. It is of most importance that we, as parliamentarians, defend the values of openness and democracy. And there is a proven connection between corruption and disregard of human rights. And if, if our objective is to guarantee fundamental rights to the citizens of the OSCE member states, there can be zero tolerance of corruption, just zero cor cor tolerance and nothing else. And what I also would like to highlight here is that uh, I have a great confidence in the OSCE principles of openness and democracy, as well as building trust and uh, uh, find a way forward uh, in line with the values of openness and democracy. And we should do our best and continue to do so. And in this, I must also say, it's important to Could include you wrap up women. Soon, Margarita, you are over Four time. minutes. I just want to say that women has to be included because women is an important part of the civil society as well as politics. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Margareta. Uh, Garasimov from the Ukraine. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson, dear colleagues. Over the past years, the issue of effective engagement of the civil society and citizens in national political processes has been recognized as a key element to building secure and democratic societies. Civil society remains a cornerstone of the OSCE paradigm. Ukraine recognizes the important role that civil society institutions play in the process of providing assistance to the promotion of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. It was civil society that was the driving force of the revolution of dignity against corruption, suppression of cruelism and kleptocracy. It was civil society that reinforced the Ukrainian army to combat the external aggression from abroad. In that term, we see the direct link between the strengthening citizens' engagement in political processes within the country and building secure and democratic society. The citizens of modern Ukraine have become a true political backbone of the current transformation in our country and remain the engine of further reforms. A strong and demanding civil society that combines their initiatives, creativity and hard work with the role of severe and meticulous control of the authorities is a peculiarity of the modern Ukrainian political system. The rights to freedom of peaceful assembly and association are among the most important human rights we possess. Civil society became the first victims of the aggressive policies of Russia on the occupied territories of Ukraine. 
We remain deeply alarmed over the systematic violations of freedoms of peaceful assembly and association by the occupying authorities in Crimea and city of Sevastopol, targeting first and foremost Crimean Tatars and pro-Ukrainian activists, as well by Russia-backed militants in certain areas of Donetsk and Lugansk regions, temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. Residents of those parts of Ukraine cannot freely exercise their right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly, and the reports are widespread of harassment, arbitrary arrest, and torture targeting civic activists. Mm -hmm. Was banned the Majlis of Crimean Tatars, this traditional organ. Restrictions also severely impact the exercise of freedom of religion or belief, limiting the activities of minority Christian communities. Distinguished members of the UC Parliamentary Assembly, we reiterate that the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association should be fully restored and measures should be taken to protect that right in practice and to ensure that organizations and individuals may hold events including commemorations and demonstrations freely and without hindrance. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you very much. How wonderful to have someone finish, not only on time, but with a minute to spare. Thank you. Miss Miliute? Lithuania? No? All right. I shall move on then to Mr. Imanaliu from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, he's not here either, so we'll go with Mr. Peter Kopitis, son from Cyprus. Merci, Madame la Présidente. La délégation suisse salue l'appel de nos hôtes à nous interroger quant aux moyens concrets de construire des sociétés sûres gage évident d'une meilleure participation citoyenne. Au sein de l'OSCE, nous construisons un espace de sécurité sur la base d'une approche qui est celle de la sécurité globale à travers les trois dimensions créées par l'acte final d'Helsinki. Dans nos sociétés, cette euh, sécurité doit être garantie sans distinction pour les femmes et pour les hommes, pour les filles et pour les garçons. En effet, nous constatons que les discriminations basées sur le genre subsistent. Ces discriminations s'exercent même souvent dans des contextes de violence extrême, en contradiction avec les engagements internationaux que nous avons tous pris. Je pense ici notamment aux violations de la Convention des Nations Unies portant sur l'élimination de toutes les formes de discrimination à l'égard des femmes et celles relatives aux droits des enfants. La violence domestique, qu'elle soit d'ordre physique ou sexuel, est présente partout dans nos sociétés. Inutile de rappeler qu'elle cause de grandes souffrances humaines et porte atteinte aux droits fondamentaux. Il existe pourtant des instruments efficaces pour lutter contre ce fléau. Ceux-ci s'étendent à la prévention, à une approche politique intégrative, en passant bien évidemment également par la protection des victimes et la poursuite pénale. Autre forme de violence subsistant dans la zone OSCE, le mariage forcé, faisant parfois suite à l'enlèvement des jeunes filles. Trop souvent accepté socialement en vertu de coutumes prétendument ancestrales, celui-ci reste encore malheureusement très répandu. Là aussi, cette pratique s'inscrit en contradiction manifeste aux instruments internationaux et aux législations nationales qui existent. Ce que j'entends souligner ici, c'est que nous ne pouvons prétendre construire des sociétés modernes et égalitaires, favorisant la participation citoyenne en continuant à tolérer ces pratiques qui empêchent de manière évidente, de nombreuses femmes et filles de choisir leur destin. La participation citoyenne découle de sociétés sûres et non l'inverse. Pour que chacune et chacun puisse faire entendre sa voix, nous devons tout d'abord respecter la dignité et garantir les droits ainsi que l'intégrité physique de chacune et chacun. Pour ce faire, les instruments légaux efficaces existent. Nous y avons souscrit. Il nous appartient maintenant à nous parlementaires de veiller à ce que ceci soit mis en œuvre et que les auteurs de ces crimes soient poursuivis et punis comme il se doit. Vous me permettrez, Madame la Présidente, de poser deux questions à M. Fonax. Première question, je souhaiterais savoir quel rôle peut jouer l'OSCE pour faciliter la coopération régionale dans la construction de sociétés sûres. Deuxième question, je souhaiterais savoir comment l'OSCE soutient les femmes pour les encourager à se lancer, à se lancer dans le marché du travail. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Uh, now I will um, go to Mr. Pitikoptis, who uh, says from Cyprus, I think we missed you out. Are you here? Yes. 
Thank you very much, uh, okay. Madam Chair. The OSC is primarily a peace project, and as such, the contribution of its citizen is an essential component in its concept of indivisible security. A society whose citizens remain engaged in political and social processes is a secure, stable, and prosperous society, a necessary component of conflict prevention, peace and building, and the post-crisis stabilization in the OSC region. Citizen ability of, to freely and actively engage in building a secure society also enables the security concerns of various groups to be streamlined into the political debate, decreasing the risk of the development of extreme ideologies and radicalization. Citizens' engagement is founded upon their ability to participate in a free and fair election. Of course, democracy is not confined to election, but is rather about the period in between. Freedom of speech and the freedom of assembly and association are necessary conditions in this respect. The rule of law must be unheld and democratic standards should not be compromised under the pretext of security interest, as is often in the case. For secure societies to withstand internal and external threats, strong democratic institutions must be able to relay on informed and engaged citizens who have the ability to leverage their rights to participate in the work of public and political institutions and to advocate for positive change. Information and communication technologies, including social media and online platforms, offer a range of civic engagement opportunities to citizens, are particularly appealing to the youth, including identifying and researching issues of importance, sharing information, and connecting with like-minded peers. Thus, freedom of media remains an essential component of building citizens' capacity to engage in democratic life. Despite the positive impact of technology, the feeling of disenfranchisement in countries where an active parliamentary dimension is lacking. Fighting corruption must remain high on our agenda as corruption undermines the relation building on trust between governments and their citizens. Furthermore, the growing globalization of trade, economies, and financial markets pose challenges to national governments and parliaments which are sometimes beyond their control through national law and policies, provoking a feeling of insecurity to citizens. This is why an active civil society, even on peripheral and international level, is today an essential development that must be pursued. That is why the OSCE must continue to provide the platform for such exchanges. Non-governmental organizations, as an expression of civil engagement, have played a vital role in the OSCE area in the political, social, and economic changes witnesses in the last decades. They built on a legacy of championing human rights through norm setting and monitoring. They have helped to shape international agreements, instruments, institutions, and human rights mechanisms. They courageously defend human rights and the freedoms, often risking reprisal themselves. Today, they continue to have an enormous impact to, in countries across the OSCE area, pursuing for governmental transparency and accountability, which in turn can fuel political reform. Their contribution in engagement responsible civic engagement in political processes must be safeguarded. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pitkopoulos. Uh, now, uh, Monsieur Boutreau from Canada. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Encore une fois, je remercie nos hôtes pour uh, cette session d'automne. Uh, nous avons passé uh, très beau temps ici à Bishkek et je vous remercie beaucoup de votre uh, accueil chaleureux. 
Euh, confiance, 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 c'est encore une fois confiance. C'est le terme qu'on doit utiliser et c'est ce qui devrait nous guider si on veut améliorer la participation citoyenne des, euh, des gens partout dans nos élections. Si on veut que les citoyens participent, il faut faire en sorte que les élections comptent, que les élections signifient quelque chose pour les gens et il faut faire en sorte que les gens aient confiance dans le résultat de ces élections. Donc, je pense que c'est euh, le mot qui devrait nous guider, nous, en tant que parlementaires, dans toutes les décisions que l'on prend, euh, parce qu'on aura beau mettre en place des systèmes, des institutions, euh, des comités, des groupes, si on ne parvient pas à rétablir la confiance des citoyens et citoyennes dans ces institutions-là, ben tout ce travail-là va être vain. Notre responsabilité, donc, c'est auprès des jeunes de les approcher euh, dans le plus jeune âge pour faire en sorte qu'ils participent, qu'ils apprennent, qu'ils qu apprivoisent le processus démocratique, euh, de créer des programmes pour les jeunes, de créer des simulations pour les jeunes, euh, pour faire en sorte que tous les jeunes soient impliqués, pas seulement ceux qui sont intéressés, parce que si on fait des demandes puis on demande aux jeunes de s'impliquer, bien évidemment qu'on va avoir les plus verbaux moteurs puis on aura les jeunes les plus impliqués, les plus décidés à participer. Ça prend également euh, des élections, évidemment, qui sont sécuritaires, euh, des élections où les gens peuvent aller voter sans aucune crainte, d'aucune euh, représailles, sans craindre euh, que leur vote ne leur soit remis sur le nez à quelque part, à un moment donné ou à un autre. Et dans la nouvelle réalité d'aujourd'hui, des élections où on, on réussit à, à mettre fin aux, aux, aux fausses nouvelles, on les appelle les « fake news euh, ». Et à ce chapitre-là, je profite de l'occasion qui m'est donnée ici, où il y a des parlementaires de tous les pays, pour inviter les pays qui utilisent ces mauvaises tactiques euh, de tenter de s'ingérer dans les élections d'autres pays, de rester chez eux et de s'occuper de leurs élections et de ne pas venir s'intéresser aux élections des autres pays. Notre pays sera en élection en 2019 et on craint effectivement que des influences étrangères par des sites Internet faux, par toutes sortes d'influences négatives qui viennent s'intégrer et tenter d'influencer les élections au Canada et comme elles le font ailleurs dans le monde, comme elles le font dans certains pays. Donc, restez chez vous, occupez-vous de vos affaires on va s'occuper de nos élections. Enfin, euh, au niveau de la participation des femmes aux élections, je peux dire qu'on a eu une élection euh, provinciale au Canada, dans une des provinces. 41 des élus sont des femmes. On est dans la zone paritaire. Je pense que c'est excellent. On a un gouvernement qui euh, a mis la parité au niveau euh, de son conseil des ministres. Donc, on est très, très content de ça. Des efforts qui doivent continuer. Mais il faut, euh, encore une fois, rétablir la confiance, que les gens aient confiance dans le processus électoral, puis faire en sorte que, dès le plus jeune âge, les hommes, les femmes euh, soient intéressés, impliqués et qu'on redonne confiance dans les institutions. Et faites-vous-en pas, ce n'est pas uniquement dans les pays où la démocratie est jeune que la confiance dans les institutions se perd. Au Canada également, euh, les gens votent de moins en moins. D'élection en élection, la participation aux élections est en diminution. Donc, la confiance également dans les pays où la démocratie euh, n'est même pas à contester, euh, la confiance dans les institutions diminue. Et encore une fois, c'est la responsabilité de nous tous, les parlementaires, de faire en sorte de rétablir cette confiance-là. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mr. Boteau. Uh, now, Mr. Kondraté, from the Federation, Russia Federation. Yes. Спасибо, госпожа председатель, уважаемый президиум, дорогие коллеги. Сегодня очень приятно было слушать госпожу председателя и ее речь о роли женщин в общественной жизни, в политических процессах. Я хочу проинформировать, как работает парламент России в этом направлении. Буквально 19-21 сентября 2018 года под председательством председателя Совета Федерации Валентины Ивановны Матвиенко проведен в Санкт-Петербурге второй Евразийский женский форум под эгидой Совета Федерации и Межпарламентской Ассамблеи стран независимых государств. Он собрал представителей 110 стран, в том числе 27 международных организаций. Спектр обсуждения был очень широк. Я хочу подчеркнуть, что мы в нашей стране Гордимся, что женщины имеют равные права вместе с мужчинами. Здесь долго говорили о проблемах похищения невест. Я скажу, что у нас на Северном Кавказе созданы специальные комиссии во избежание этого, этой проблемы, которая несет за собой уже многолетние, столетние практики. И мы исключили это явление из нашей жизни. 
Конечно же, хочу еще раз поблагодарить господина Пьера фон Арка за ту веру в парламентскую дипломатию по отношению к своим гражданам, которую он озвучил. Но здесь, вот, конечно же, хотелось бы привести некоторые моменты лицемерия в политике ряда стран, международных организаций. Здесь говорилось о проблемах людей с ограниченными возможностями. И мы не можем с тревогой не отметить, что в отношении наших граждан, паралимпийцев, Международным олимпийским комитетом, ВАДА, были приняты решения, когда целая паралимпийская команда была репрессирована, фактически отстранена от участия в паралимпийской олимпиаде. Это не вызывает никаких эмоций, кроме сожаления. Конечно же, очень больно слушать, что здесь, на высочайшей парламентской площадке, звучат лицемерные заявления о ряде нарушений. Эмоциональные заявления представителей нашей братской соседней стороны о якобы оккупации, они не несут за собой никакой юридической основы. Я посмею себе напомнить, что юридически оккупация – это юридический термин, предусматривающий состояние войны между двумя государствами и занятием воюющими армиями страны противника той территории. Скажите, мы находимся в состоянии войны с Украиной? Ни в коем случае. Это братская наша республика, братский народ, который страдает от захвата государственной власти рядом олигархических кругов. И когда говорят о том, что поставлен контроль за властями, я напомню, что Международный валютный фонд из-за коррупции на Украине имеет огромные проблемы по кредитованию этой страны. Если говорить о таком явлении, как убийство журналистов, например, Олеся Бузины, расследование которого не завершено и до сих пор не озвучены результаты, то нужно сказать, что в этой стороне государственной политикой стал государственный террор. Я уже вчера приводил пример, как на территориях Донбасса и Луганска Силами безопасности Украины путем взрывов уничтожаются лидеры, подобные Александру Захарченко. Где вы видели, в какой стране взорвали бы лидера? И до сих пор на Донбассе не проведены государственные демократические выборы в соответствии с международными соглашениями «Минск-2». Я позволю себе напомнить, что международное право трактует обязательность международных договоров к исполнению вне зависимости от смены правительства, режимов и парламента. Что хочется сказать, буквально вчера э, разразился скандал между Венгрией и Украиной из-за закона о языке, который не только венгров касается, живущих на Украине, но и в том числе многочисленного русского населения. И эти проблемы нас тревожат. Когда наши коллеги говорят о проблемах Крыма, я позволю себе напомнить о перекрытом Крымском канале 4 года назад из-за которого жители Крымской э, области не получают воды, где вы видели цивилизованное государство с подобными решениями таких проблем. И поэтому нам хотелось бы заострить эти проблемы. Я заканчиваю. Спасибо огромное за злободневные, нужные вопросы. Yes. Всем здоровья. Uh, and I will move on to Mr. Torobaev from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, спасибо, госпожа председатель, уважаемые участники заседания. Создание сообщества безопасности является сферой обоюдных интересов и совместной задачи государства и простых граждан. Наряду с сотрудничеством на уровне ведомств, отвечающих за обеспечение безопасности, очень важно в рамках закона привлекать потенциал гражданского общества, в том числе образовательных и научных учреждений, средств массы информации, традиционных религиозных организаций. Укрепление диалога между различными группами интересов и органами власти способствует более активному продвижению различных инициатив, обмену опытом, определяет более точные цели государственного управления и делает более понятную работу механизмов их достижения, а также служит устойчивому развитию регионов и повышению степени доверия к власти. Система государственного управления должна быть ориентирована на понимание вопроса о том, что не может быть значимых и малозначимых гражданских инициатив. Любое общественное действие имеет значение и пользу. 
более широкое участие граждан в процессах и активизации гражданского общества на местном уровне, а также своевременная реакция местных властей и государства в целом на предложение людей обеспечивает стабильность сообществ и благоприятно отражается на обеспечение безопасности. Активное и качественное взаимодействие граждан и институтов государства, помимо решения практических вопросов, формирует атмосферу противодействия таким вызовам и угрозам, как коррупция, терроризм, экстремизм и другие. Тем самым создаются необходимые условия для безопасной жизни. В Кыргызской республике граждане могут избрать для себя различные формы для продвижения как частных, так и коллективных инициатив. Это членство в общественных наблюдательных советах при государственных органах, участие в различных неправительственных организациях, а также самостоятельно. При этом общий курс государства направлен на законодательную поддержку стремление людей участвовать в создании общей безопасной среды. Большое спасибо за внимание. Cara Presidente Frai, onorevoli colleghi, cari amici, prendo la parola per la prima volta in questa Assemblea ed è un onore farlo qui in Kirghizistan, un paese che in questi pochi giorni ho imparato ad apprezzare e che ringrazio per la brillante organizzazione di questo evento. L'Italia ha da poco formato una nuova delegazione che condivide spirito e obiettivi di questa Assemblea. Sono i principi di pace, dialogo e solidarietà che sono stati riaffermati nei colloqui a più alto livello nel corso degli incontri che il nostro Presidente Zereteli ha avuto in Italia lo scorso mese. In questa legislatura sono stata eletta Vice Presidente del Senato italiano e nello svolgere questo incarico il mio impegno è per la difesa di quei valori di democrazia e libertà che sono i valori di questa Assemblea, i nostri valori. Faccio parte di un giovane movimento politico italiano, il Movimento 5 Stelle, che ha fatto della partecipazione dei cittadini al governo della cosa pubblica e della trasparenza il cuore del proprio messaggio politico. Ma sui valori fondanti dell'OSCE non ci sono divisioni politiche in Italia. È questo il senso dell'anno di presidenza italiana dell'OSCE, che si concluderà con la riunione ministeriale del prossimo 6-7 dicembre a Milano. L'Italia è attualmente impegnata nel rafforzamento degli istituti di democrazia diretta che permettono di coinvolgere di più i cittadini e li avvicinano alla politica in un momento in cui la partecipazione è in crisi e non solo in Italia. Occorre lavorare in questa direzione facendo attenzione a rispettare le specificità di ciascuno perché ogni cittadino ha diritto di essere riconosciuto e valorizzato a prescindere dalla sua condizione economica, sociale e professionale. Lo dico in questo Paese che ricorda quest'anno, come mi hanno detto gli amici kirghisi, i dieci anni della morte dello scrittore Chingiz Aitmatov. Nelle sue opere Aitmatov ha dato particolare attenzione ai costumi e alle tradizioni locali, perché per favorire la partecipazione io credo sia necessario valorizzare i singoli e le peculiarità culturali di ciascuno. Un altro lavoro che viene fatto in Italia è accrescere il ruolo delle donne nella vita pubblica. Personalmente il mio impegno è di agevolare l'accesso delle donne alle strutture sanitarie e tutelare la maternità nella vita professionale e civile. Ieri ho partecipato a una bella iniziativa della delegazione francese, sempre molto attiva qui all'OSCE, e della presidente Sereno Berri. Questa iniziativa si è svolta presso l'Alliance Française, si trattava di una mostra satirica attraverso disegni sulla parità di genere e la libertà di espressione. Sono convinta che sia questa la direzione giusta, unire il diritto di esprimersi liberamente alla promozione della ricchezza e della specificità di ciascuno, in particolare della componente femminile di tutte le società. Grazie. Thank you very much. Uh, I now go to Ms. Hendriksen from Norway. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to the speakers for their broad and interesting introduction to this debate. 
I attended the UN 62nd Women Convention in New York this year. Team was empowering women and girls in rural areas. Here, the civil societies and NGOs performed strength and diversity, and their important role was visible. At the same time, many of the NGOs expressed serious concerns for the negligation and undermining of their role and their possibilities to gather and organize. Many of the teams was about gender-based violence, a team that also was addressed in the introduction. Migrants and women are unsecure and disabled countries, are misused and expelled for criminal violence and sexual abuse. I am glad for the OSCE's focus on this challenge and the strong voice you have been, Dr. Fry, for gender equality and against violence against women. The work of the OSCE, which has lifted the criminal and sexual abuse of women and girls in war and as migrants, is well known and must continue and must be strengthened. OSCE's role and voice in securing women and girls in war and conflicts has maybe contributed to the acknowledge, acknowledgement of Dr. David Mukwege's efforts to helping and operating women and girls for um, their injuries regarding to rape and sexual assaults and also to Mrs. Nadia Muradi's work, an Iraqi victim of sexual violence and human trafficking, 25 years old. She was abducted by ES and is now a US ambassador, the first for survivors of human trafficking. I can hereby declare that they too got the Norwegian Nobel Peace Prize today. And I would like to summarize the Nobel Peace Committee's decision because it's in the core of OSCE's values. The Norwegian Nobel Peace Prize has awarded the Peace Prize to Nadia Murad and David Mukwege for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflicts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll now go to Mr. Svensson from Iceland. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to thank the Kyrgyz people for hosting this meeting and all the arrangements for it and also the capable staff of the OSCE for their part. We discuss promoting security dialogue in Central Asia and beyond. An important issue that not only matters to Central Asia but us all. Security is composed of a variety of issues. Social, food security, laws and regulations, citizen safety, security on la of land, on land and energy, for example. How can we ensure this security? Most importantly, by respecting, by respecting international laws and agreements, borders and sovereignty of each other, respecting agreements on common resources, sharing knowledge on technology, and most importantly, ensuring equality and human rights among our citizens. Lack of equality and opportunities to live a decent life are well-known reasons for a sustainable society, yet we fail to deliver. Women and children are those ones who suffer most and we represent a majority of those who flee injustice and violence, most often caused by men. We should think about our mothers, spouses, sisters and daughters and ask us if we want them to be in the same situations as millions of women and girls. We, the men, should look into our own heart and acknowledge that equality between men and women is human right. Madam Chair, I would like to use this opportunity to commend you, Dr. Fry, for your tireless fight for equality for women and discussing the issue with us in plain English. The importance of including women in peace negotiations and implementation of agreements has been repeatedly, repeatedly highlighted by UN Resolution 1325 and following resolutions. Moreover, women's participation in society and economy is an important factor for success. The participation of all citizens, the security and safety of all citizens, is a precondition for economic and political stability. Madam Chair, the fight for gender equality is difficult, mostly because some of men do not understand it. However, 
Everyone should be aware of the importance of women's contribution to society and at least the economy. Iceland would not have, in just a few decades, evolved from being one of the world's poorest countries to one of the richest without women's participation in, so in the society. Dear friends, let us not forget our role as members of the, this respectable organization and let us not forget the importance of gender equality and other human rights. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I now go to Mr. Invidia from Italy. Thank you, Madam President. Dear colleagues, we've just discussed about citizens' engagement as key to enforce international security. There is an overall tendence, tendency to consider citizens and societies as weak actors when it comes to power politics. And yet, I believe they are the true key to achieve a consistent regional peace. I'm not stating this out of a naive or idealistic standpoint. Quite the contrary, to cultivate the economic and educational opportunities for the citizens is the essence of, re of regional security, including here in Central Asia. This is why yesterday, the common denominator of our debate on Central Asia was the strengthening of economic cooperation as synonym of prevention. This is also why OSCE, among the numerous programs, works so hard on economy. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the citizens of a former unified country were suddenly divided in separated and often hostile countries, especially in this region. Many workers had to cross new borders to reach their uh, workplaces. This is why OSCE fostered and will foster here programs to ease transborder cooperation, to regulate labor migrants and their economic activities. OSCE's offices also support cross-border cooperation investments and uh, free economic zones here in Bishkek, as well as uh, in all other uh, Central Asian countries. So surely this best practice of economic cooperation helps the peace and stability process among neighbor countries. Similarly important for the citizens of this region is OSCE's educational effort in the field operations related to academic and cultural cooperation. So one can ironically state that this, in this assembly, the General Committee on Economic and Scientific Affairs have the biggest chance to achieve security, maybe even more than the Committee on Political and Security Affairs itself. By ennobling this approach, the new Italian government here in Central Asia is strongly supporting economic partnerships like the Belt and Road Initiatives, as much as modernization of the airports of Karakol and Nisikul. Our government also joins the educational project financed by the Asian Development Bank regarding teachers and trainings. In line with this philosophy our, uh, of common sense, the Five Star Movement have always bet on society and on people. And by doing that, we state that it's not about forcing peace and stability, it's about nudging peace and stability. After all, OSCE's diplomacy is perfectly in line with the Five Star Movement, movement approach as it privileges the diplomacy among citizens more than the one among states. Finally, but not, le not less important, let me state, let me state uh, that to dignify the empowerment of society in international policy making doesn't necessarily mean to pursue slow results, but surely consistent and durable ones. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now go to Michael Link from Germany. Echo. Madam Chair, dear Hedi, I will speak in my native German language. Um, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, und vor allem, uh, verehrter Präsident, freue mich, dass wir jetzt am Ende auch mit unserem Präsidenten George Ceretelli uh, noch einmal eine ganz wichtige Gelegenheit haben, wichtige Dinge anzusprechen. Wir als deutsche Delegation waren und sind beeindruckt von dem, was wir hier gesehen haben in Kirgistan. Und äh, danken deshalb ganz ausdrücklich unseren Gastgebern, danken aber auch äh, den Parlamentariern, gerade die so lange daran gearbeitet haben, dass äh, diese Konferenz ein Erfolg wird und der hiesigen Mission und der Botschafter Pierre von Arx, der rastlos und mit größtem Engagement mit seinem Team dafür gesorgt hat, dass hier eine unglaublich starke und wichtige OSZE-Präsenz besteht. Und äh, man kann beide nur beglückwünschen. Man kann Kirgisistan beglückwünschen für diese Präsenz der OSZE. Man kann die OSZE beglückwünschen, hier arbeiten zu können. Wir haben uns in der Mittagspause die OSZE Academy angeschaut. Eine wirkliche, ein, ein Crown Jewel, ein Kronjuwel 
der Arbeit der OSZE. Eine einmalige Einrichtung, die es so sonst nicht gibt und deren Arbeit wir, glaube ich, dringend unterstützen sollten als Parlamentarier und vielleicht auch überlegen sollten, wie wir auch national da über Zuwendungen, über Funding auch noch Unterstützung geben könnten. Deshalb, gerade weil unser Thema ja Strengthening Citizens Engagement in Building Secure Societies ist, das beste Investment in Secure Societies ist Bildung, Wissen, Wissen über Rechte. Wenn du weißt, wenn du Rechte, welche Rechte du hast, dann kann sie dir auch äh, viel schwer genommen werden. Und deshalb möchte ich daran erinnern, das war eines der Grundprinzipien von Helsinki im Dekalog. You have rights and you have to know about your rights. Rechte haben und über die Rechte wissen. Und deshalb ist diese äh, auch OECD-Akademie so wichtig. Wir beglückwünschen diese Arbeit und werden sie gerne unterstützen. Und da wir uns kurz vor Mailand, kurz vor dem Ministerrat befinden, noch ein kurzer Hinweis, der mir aber sehr wichtig ist, auch als Vice Chair des Third Committee. Wir sind ähm, als parlamentarische Versammlung und auch die Institutionen, zum Beispiel ODIA, sehr aktiv beim Thema Roma. Die Diskriminierung von Roma wird leider in den letzten Monaten und Jahren, viele Beispiele gibt es in vielen Ländern, West. Europa, Mitteleuropa, Osteuropa, leider schlimmer. Ähm, insbesondere Roma-Frauen, aber auch Jugendliche leiden unter diesen Diskriminierungen. Seit vielen Jahren ist es nicht gelungen, einen Beschluss auf dem Ministerrat zu machen im Bereich Antidiskrim Bekämpfung von Antidiskriminierung von Roma. Ich würde mich sehr, sehr freuen, wenn wir, und es wäre ein Vorschlag, ähm, den ich gerne machen würde, und ich mich sehr freuen würde, wenn unser Präsident das auch gegenüber der italienischen Chairmanship unterstreichen würde. Es wäre wichtig, dass vielleicht noch einmal Energie aufgewandt wird seitens des italienischen Vorsitzes und seitens aller Akteure in Wien, dieses Jahr endlich einmal wieder zu einem Beschluss zu kommen, der die aktuellen Probleme im Bereich von Diskriminierung von Roma adressiert. Das wäre ein großer Erfolg und wäre eine große Unterstützung für die Aktivitäten die hier diese Versammlung macht und für die Aktivitäten zum Beispiel eben auch von ODIA, das in diesem Bereich sehr intensiv arbeitet, aber auch natürlich dessen, was viele von uns hier national in ihrem Parlament machen. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, I now go to Monsieur Del Barba from Italy. Grazie, Presidente, onorevoli colleghi. Anche io mi aggiungo all'elenco di coloro che fanno i complimenti agli organizzatori per questa assemblea autunnale davvero di alto livello e con un'impeccabile organizzazione. Sono rimasto molto ammirato nell'ascoltare la qualità eh, dei progetti che ci sono stati illustrati e la puntualità con cui si rivolgono ai singoli bisogni e ai problemi eh, dei vari stati aderenti alla nostra organizzazione. Questo è molto positivo. Parto dalla convinzione che rafforzare la cittadinanza passa sicuramente per la tutela dei diritti, come abbiamo visto, a partire da quelli delle minoranze, dal rafforzamento della democrazia. Eh, tuttavia nella, qualità, nella eh, quotidianità il ruolo che svolgono attività come la produzione di beni e servizi e lo scambio, quindi il commercio, la competizione tra le aziende, pervade gli spazi di vita di ciascuno di noi. Mentre gli stati, le organizzazioni sovrastatali con grande sforzo politico e diplomatico tessono faticosamente accordi relazioni per creare le condizioni affinché questo mercato eh, si sviluppi nel modo migliore possibile per il benessere della collettività, ogni giorno centinaia di milioni di soggetti operano e dialogano tra loro parlando un unico linguaggio che è il linguaggio eh, economico. Questi soggetti sono le nostre imprese che sono presenti in tutti eh, i nostri stati. Ecco, io credo allora di non stupire nessuno, men che meno l'OSCE che è dotata di una commissione proprio su questi temi, nell'affermare che attraverso lo sviluppo 
eh, del, eh, di un modello di mercato sicuramente rafforziamo la sicurezza e la coesione tra i cittadini. Voglio riferirmi però in particolare a, a un tema che è quello della sostenibilità, eh, che è un tema che oramai pervade tutte le dimensioni della nostra vita eh, comune, non solamente quella ambientale e sociale, ma eh, sicuramente tocca anche il tema della sicurezza e della qualità della vita. Sappiamo che l'ONU è impegnata con i 17 obiettivi di sviluppo sostenibile e che gli stati faticosamente si stanno allineando. Io credo che la nostra organizzazione eh, debba davvero pensare a, a contribuire in questa dimensione anche laddove pensa alla sicurezza. In particolare l'Italia si è dotata, eh, primo Stato sovrano al mondo, di una legge sulle Benefit Corporation, che è una legge che sostanzialmente affida responsabilità ambientali, sociali, di sicurezza agli imprenditori. Eh, noi abbiamo a disposizione un enorme esercito che può essere un esercito di costruzione di pace che è l'esercito di coloro che ogni giorno si alzano per produrre, per scambiare e per cercare convivenza attraverso il mercato. Insistere affinché la qualità di questi soggetti, delle imprese, del lavoro che si svolge all'interno delle imprese, fin da quel nucleo possa essere migliorata e possa incorporare tutti i valori di cui abbiamo parlato oggi, credo che sia un'attività uh, che meriti la nostra attenzione se non addirittura la nostra priorità, perché lì si cela un grandissimo potenziale. Grazie. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Miliut, Lithuania. Thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Lithuanian delegation, I would like to thank Kyrgyzstan for organizing the session and for the hospitality. Let me also congratulate on choosing the path of parliamentary democracy. Lithuania and other Baltic states made this choice almost 30 years ago. We have always felt the support and assistance of the international community of democracies. Therefore, we now support democratic processes in the countries that has chosen this path too. Having suffered occupation for 50 years, we know very well that security is indivisible. That is why we have become donors of security ourselves. We are contributing to the security situation in the Middle East. Lithuanian troops have been participating in the missions in Afghanistan for many years, many years now. What is more, being on the outskirts of the Schengen area, we are guarding over 1,000 kilometer long border with Russia and Belarus and we have genuine concerns over the developments on the other side of the border. We see actions targeted against democracies, no matter old or new. We see attempts to redraw borders in Europe. We witness the occupation of territories of independent sovereign countries, such as Georgia and Ukraine. We experience manipulation with energy resources and aggressive practices of intelligence services. We suffer cyber and disinformation attacks. Moreover, we observe interference into domestic affairs of sovereign nations. Russia has turned our border into the most militarized spot in Europe. Russia's preparedness to use the combination of military, economic, energy, information, and other civil means against the neighbors, its ability to exploit and create internal problems in the eastern neighborhood countries, as well as its preparedness to use a nuclear weapon against non-nuclear countries, is a challenge for the whole democratic community. This kind of aggression cannot be covered up by fighting against terrorism. Don't get me wrong. Terrorism is a huge challenge for all of us. However, we cannot ignore that Russia's political elite is not respecting democratic traditions and the established security architecture. Russia's aggression against the neighboring countries represent a source of international tension and threaten global peace, and that cannot be ignored or covered. Thank you very much. Uh, I now go to Mr. Mir Kishli from Azerbaijan. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I want also to thank to my Kyrgyz colleagues on behalf of Azerbaijan delegation for a nice organization and the hospitality. And I want to thank to Mr. President and to Mr. General Secretary of the OECCPA also for a nice organization of discussion and very interesting topics. I would like just to develop the uh, speech of the Mr. Michael Links here that uh, what's more important for us is education. If we talk about the citizens, actually the engagement of the citizens, we have to just to understand that we are living in a very different age now. 
Today, the digital revolution is changing everything. Even the traditional method and tools of the government and society is very less effective. Now we are transferring from the centralized governing society to the inclusive governing society. And there is a total difference between them. If the first one is based on the government structure, but the second one is based on the citizen basing systems. Even today, today's education is the very difference that it was, for example, the last thousands of years. If the last thousand years education was based on the school-based education, but now today's education is the student-based education. It's a totally different. And I want just to say that if we want to secure our society in the future, and it's very important to educate the pupils, and just to develop the persons and they will achieve security in, the, in the, at their society. We have to understand that today more than 4 billion users will have internet. In just 10 years, it will be more than 6 billion people. If there is more than 6 billion people in the internet, it means that we have to find new ways how to govern, how to pursue these people, and how to create the trust. The terrorism that has been, achieved, uh, has been caused in Europe, in Turkey, it, it's one of the proofs that it's not enough just to develop, to educate people in our countries. It's one of the proofs that we have to educate the people in other countries also. Because if we will not educate the people in other countries, we will see such cows in our homes also. I just want to, the last in conclusion, just to conclude the words of the great son of the Kyrgyz nation, Chinggis Aitmatos. There will be winter, there will be cold, there will be snowstorms, but then will be spring again and again. Thank you very much. There, yeah, thank you very much. And then I go finally to Ms. Gecht from Russia. Спасибо, госпожа Фрай. Ваша неравнодушная объективность, оно заставило меня все-таки выступить. И я хочу остановиться на нескольких сюжетах из жизни. И это на самом деле правдивые истории, а не зачитанные с листка девочка из Литвы подготовленный текст, который ничего не имеет, никакого отношения не имеет к правде. Я абсолютно согласна с госпожой Сагерфельд, которая говорит о том, что все наши отношения должны базироваться на доверии. Я согласна с ее возмущением о том, что парламентариев не пустили в Турцию. Но я... Хочу призвать к тому, что санкции в отношении парламентариев, и в том числе российских, это тоже недопустимый шаг в международной дипломатии. И мы не раз говорили о том, что нам необходимо выступить за отмену санкций в отношении парламентариев всего мира. Второй момент. Я абсолютно поддерживаю коллегу из Канады, который говорил о вмешательстве в выборы. И считаю это недопустимым. Но я хочу привести два примера. Накануне сентябрьских выборов транснациональная компания Google размещала в день тишины в наш, по нашему законодательству ролики, призывающие бойкотировать выборы, их срывать и так далее. Тогда обращение, и в том числе от Центральной избирательной комиссии в адрес компании Google привело к тому, что с 12 часов дня они начали убирать эти ролики из интернета. Еще один пример. Накануне президентских выборов такое известное издание, как Deutsche Welle, размещает памятку на русском языке из пяти пунктов, как сорвать выборы президента. Госпожа Фрай, сложно себе представить, если бы на российском канале, например, RT, появилась бы на английском языке такая же памятка. Это был бы вселенский скандал, да, но то есть допустимо в отношении России делать то, что недопустимо и осуждается, причем абсолютно без аргументов в отношении России. И последний случай, когда работник аппарата Совета Федерации по приглашению норвежской стороны приезжает на семинар, вот на таком же совещании снимает и делает несколько фотографий, и его задерживают на выезде из страны. Накануне адвокат одного из шпионов норвежских, который признал свою вину, говорит о том, что мы вам ответим и мы его обменяем, и это случится завтра. И завтра был задержан сотрудник Совета Федерации. Коллеги, мы никогда не восстановим доверие, действуя такими способами. И я как-то в прошлом веке, один из видных политиков сказал, что демократия – это когда два волка и овца обсуждают меню на ужин. 
Так вот, я хочу сказать, что те времена прошли. И что пока мы не будем считаться с интересами суверенных государств, а Россия сегодня единственная, наверное, которая сохраняет свой суверенитет, мы никогда не придем к доверию. Спасибо. Thank you very much. And that brings to an end the participation from this assembly. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate everybody. You were very good at keeping time, all of you. So even when you went a titch, it was only a little titch over. So thanks very much for being so cooperative. Uh, I'm now going to allow uh, my, the three panelists to have four minutes to comment or to answer any questions or, or any uh, comments that was made from the floor that they felt needed some kind of attention. Thank you very much. I will go back to beginning with Pierre Von Ark. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Madame Heidi Frey. Um, a, a lot of uh, your uh, remarks were done on the role that the OAC play uh, to uh, facilitate uh, cooperation between citizens in uh, implementing legislation on, on gender issue. Uh, uh, some remarks uh, and thought about it. First, the OAC is the biggest regional organization under the charter of the United Nations, so has a natural complementary role to play uh, in implementing uh, UNSCR commitments and other UN commitments. Uh, second, the OAC has its own commitment. I would like to recall the 1999 uh, Istanbul Summit document recognizing uh, the role, the full role and the full participation of women uh, and uh, give a tasking not only to the OSC but also to the participating states to reach gender uh, equality. And uh, sh let's share me very shortly some uh, uh, of my experience here in Kyrgyzstan which is uh, really uh, uh, positive. Uh, here the OSC is engaged, the host state also. And we have been working since 2010 on normative framework, on legislative framework and a lot has been done. Now we are going to the implementation. There are national action plan on gender equality in uh, Kyrgyzstan. We have been also uh, co-drafting and now we are helping them to implement them. As you know, there is a ratio of 30% uh, at the national parliament uh, for uh, women. Uh, more can be done at the regional and self-local governments. And this is the first strategic goal of the recommendation of the, which was presented to the president in August. Uh, inclusiveness, including participation of women, was the first point of recommendation. There are several public dialogue with partic full participation of women. Um, my mandate also requests uh, the office to develop cross-dimensional gender activities. And I would like to underline that each of my activities has a gender component and I created a monitoring and evaluation unit also to uh, monitor uh, the implementation. Some good example, the entrepreneurship support center we created in Osh in the south uh, almost one year ago, more than 70% of the people coming there are women. Uh, we are making uh, gender training for religious leaders with the staff committee of religious affairs. And um, we are making also training session for the country with, for women and uh, girls. So if you are interested uh, in our work, I am open after uh, this uh, plenary meeting uh, to um, tell the, you more of our, the success of the implementation. Thank you. And I will now ask Mr. Misabekov to comment. You have four minutes. No, you have no comments. Wow. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Im. Thanks again, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, we spoke uh, a lot uh, about the engagement of women and I was uh, so uh, happy and lucky to give uh, some uh, examples how we are empowering women to take part, uh, for instance, in the economic processes in Uzbekistan, but also in, uh, in decision making at uh, authorities and so on. I would like now uh, to um, lead your attention on uh, on youth, because of course the. Uh, 
one time we have to, uh, to give this world into the hands of the young generation and we are very happy that uh, one of the biggest uh, events uh, OSCE organized uh, in this year of 2018 took part in Uzbekistan, in, in Tashkent, and it was an international conference uh, on youth. In June uh, this year, the international conference on the role of youth in preventing and counteracting violent extremism and radicalization that, led to, uh, that lead to terrorism took place in Tashkent. Major goals of this event were to raise awareness and formulating policy recommendations on the need to engage and empower youth in preventing violent extremism and radicalization that lead to terrorism. This two-day event took place in Tashkent in Samarkand and has been organized by the, by the OSCE project coordinator in Uzbekistan in cooperation with the Senate, uh, the Oil Majlis of the Republic of Uzbekistan, and the support of various institutions of the United Nations Organization family. The importance given to this event had been underlined by the presence of high-level speakers, like the Secretary General of the OSCE, uh, Thomas Gremminger, the first Vice Speaker of the Senate of the uh, Oli Majlis of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Sodik Safoyev, UN Secretary General of Envoy on Youth, uh, Mrs. Uh, Yayatma Vikramanayake, EU Special Representative for uh, Central Asia, Ambassador Peter Burian, and others. Uh, we were <coughs> co-organizing this, this event and we worked together again with, uh, with other international organizations. And we, we are, uh, for instance, the, uh, despite, the European, uh, despite the European Union, in the uh, good position that we come from inside. Uzbekistan, or here Kyrgyzstan, is part of the family. Uh, when EU uh, approaches to Central Asia, they always come from outside. Uh, we are inside the processes, we can much more actively uh, take part in, uh, in the processes um, uh, concerning youth, concerning women, of course, concerning economic development, and we are, ha we are happy to do so, and uh, we promise our host countries to continue our efforts in this direction. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, before we end, there was a question that was asked by one of the delegates, uh, Mr. Hildpold from Switzerland, and I don't know if any one of you on the panel would like to answer it. He asked, what role will the OSC play to facilitate and ensure gender equal legislation is enforced? You want to take that one? Um, I would be ready to give uh, more information. I have to study uh, what has been done by the past. Uh, the legislation uh, which is drafted in Kyrgyz Republic is also draft drafted on the uh, gender angle. Um, uh, the exercise of drafting different legislation, the Spartias, has been extremely serious with the cooperation uh, of the international community, uh, the United Nations, the OAC, but also with the civil society, NGOs, not only from the country, but also from abroad. And uh, those aspects have been uh, really taken into uh, account. And I can tell you uh, that in each national action plan, you find, you find a gender aspect. Answer your question, but it promises to do so eventually. And thanks again, everyone. This session is over, and I think I will pass things on to George Ceratelli, our esteemed president. So you, you left me alone here. Thank you, dear Heidi. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to hear 
remarks of our and interventions of our colleagues. Uh, and the topic was really uh, uh, very interesting. How to contribute better to our citizens or how to make their lives better, which is a main idea of our gatherings and our work as, a, as, a, as a politicians. So we are concluding our session here, but before, uh, before my, my final remarks today, I'd like to give floor to the head of delegation of Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Isao Morkolov. Спасибо, уважаемый господин председатель, уважаемые коллеги, уважаемые председатели, уважаемый генеральный секретарь. Мы очень рады, что вы высоко оценили организацию осеннего собрания Совета Европы здесь у нас, в ОБСЕ. Мы постарались приложить все усилия для того, чтобы создать для вас условия для работы. И тема, которую мы с вами обсуждали, она актуальна, имеет большое значение для всех государств и народов мира. Я думаю, это даст новый импульс в борьбе с безопасностью, которая сегодня беспокоит многие-многие страны. Если мы с вами встречались как коллеги, то прощаемся с вами как друзья. Я хочу еще раз поблагодарить генерального секретаря, уважаемого господина Монтелла, председателя, уважаемого нашего Церетели, аппарат, переводчиков, всех, кто причастен к организации данного мероприятия. Хочу еще раз выразить большую благодарность вам, уважаемые друзья. Прекрасного пребывания, хорошего настроения и до новых встреч в Вене. И сегодня мы еще с вами увидимся. Спасибо за внимание. Не только увидимся, но что-то еще будет. Да, да обязательно. Для, для вас сегодня от имени нашего спикера будет предложен прием. Спасибо. At least uh, once I will use this restroom because uh, nobody spoke. Well, uh, Thank you very much, dear, dear friend, dear Isa, on behalf of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly. I would like to once again extend our deepest gratitude to the delegation of Kyrgyzstan, to the OSCPA, and the Jogogu Kanesh, the Parliament of Kyrgyzstan, to the, for the excellent organization of this autumn meeting. Uh, let us all give them once again a warm round of applause. And uh, thank you, dear colleagues, for traveling to Kyrgyzstan and for actively participating in all our discussions. After these days of learning from each other and debating the way forward to the OSC region, we know this conference has been fruitful. We have heard uh, a wide range of views from experts, parliamentarians, ambassadors, OSC officials, and high-level representatives of this wonderful country. We have analyzed how confidence building and regional cooperation can help us counter uh, new challenges and threats in border areas uh, such as trafficking in human beings along migration routes, tackling the trafficking of illicit drugs, or preventing the spread of terrorism. We have discussed how the Mediterranean and Central Asia can learn from each other to address migration, trade, and environmental challenges. We have reiterated the importance of engaging our citizens in 
to provide a comprehensive answer to all those troubles and threats. Dear colleagues, as I mentioned at our opening ceremony, action is dearly needed to make the results of our discussions most meaningful. As we return to our national parliaments, we must turn these ideas into concrete plans and actions. We must carry on holding our governments accountable and pushing them to live up to their commitments. With the deterioration, deterioration of trust across the OSC area, we parliamentarians have the critical and the crucial role to play to encourage dialogue. Many of us <coughs> have noted the positive and friendly atmosphere of our meetings. And I think, and I thank also all our members for their constructive contributions. These events, like, like here today in Bishkek, are also, of course, the occasion to deepen our personal relations and more, you know, the personal relations between our, all our members on, on different level uh, with uh, our political agendas and without our political agendas, we are human beings. And uh, here I'd like to recall uh, the nice words of great Kyrgyz author and a son of this country, Chinggis Aitmatov, when he said that it's the ultimate goal to be human today, tomorrow, and forever. And my dear friends, let me thank once again our Kyrgyz hosts and to all who have contributed to our autumn meeting. A special thank and a special gratitude uh, goes to our staff, our secretariat, who were at the stage or behind the scene, uh, the volunteers who have been so helpful. And uh, uh, we have also a uh, very nice day today. We'd like to congratulate with a birthday of a very dedicated member of our secretariat, Dana Bjorgard. Uh, I think she's here and let's congratulate her. And then with this applause also to once again thank all of our members. Where is Dana? Ah, please, Dana, just to show up, please. We are waiting for you. Dana will uh, hate us for doing this. She likes to be we very know. reserved. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so we have really great people. Uh, I asked Dana today, I didn't see you, you know, many times, but she was working very hard beyond the scene. So thank you very much again and good luck. And of course, uh, mm, it, the, our gratefulness goes to all our secretariat. As always, we are thanking great helpers, uh, great people, our interpreters, uh, where they are. Thank you and a big applause to you <laughs> for your excellent job. Now, dear friends, I look forward to seeing you at the uh, evening reception as Ms. Mr. Isao Merkulov already announced, and I think then after that, I, I think we will all enjoy this evening, and then our next meeting will be in Vienna for winter meeting. So thank you very much for a great job, and good luck and success to all of you. Thank you.